Hello and welcome to this section on gRPC Deep Dive. So before we get into the code, I really want to take a moment to explain how gRPC works, what the foundations are, etc, etc, because I really think that for you to understand how the code works, you need to understand how the framework works and the concept around it. So first, protocol buffers is going to be a cornerstone of gRPC. This is what a protocol buffer looks like for gRPC. So we still define our messages and we'll define data for request and data for response. As you know, I want you to have some preliminary knowledge in, GRP in protocol buffers. So make sure you follow that course first. Um, and then we'll define the service. So you can see the second red box. We'll define the service using protocol buffers. And so our service, as we'll see later, we'll learn how to write them. We'll basically define our API endpoints and this will allow us gRPC to generate code for us. Okay, so everything you've learned into the protocol buffer course will be used um, to generate services in gRPC. Now, the beautiful thing is that gRPC, just like protocol buffers, will be able to generate code for you. So why protocol buffers and why not JSON like we have in all the APIs, like REST APIs? Well, gRPC is really important to use protocol buffers for communications. And the reason is because of the payload size. So if we look at JSON, for example, and we have a JSON document, with age, first name, and last name, okay? Then we have this payload, and I measured it online. This is approximately 55 bytes, okay? Still really small, but look at it. Now, if we define the same person in using protocol buffers, so we have our message person, and has age as tag one for int32, then string, uh, first name, string, last name for tag two and three. If I encoded and I wrote the code myself, if I encoded this thing and produce the exact same message, so my first name, my last name, and my age, um, I will get 20 bytes. And so you can see right away that uh, from protocol buffers to JSON, we save a lot of bandwidth because the messages are smaller. Okay, so already we start using protocol buffers, we'll save in network bandwidth. Additionally, parsing JSON is actually quite CPU intensive, and there's lots of library trying to optimize that, but overall, it still remains pretty CPU intensive, and that's because the format is human readable, right? We can read this using our eyes, but protocol buffers, the bytes, you would not understand anything. So parsing protocol buffers, though, because it's binary and because it's very, very close to how the data is actually represented in memory, will be less CPU intensive, okay? And that's really important because on top of this, Protocol buffers will basically means faster and more efficient communications and devices that are uh, a bit weaker, such as mobile devices that have a slower CPU or even IoT devices will be able to have better performance with protocol buffers than with JSON. So all in all, protocol buffers is a no-brainer for gRPC. Now, I told you that we could generate uh, some code using gRPC. So let's go on the gRPC website and as we'll see, there will be 11 languages at the time of recording that are officially supported by gRPC. And many others are actually unofficially supported, they're just not on the website. So here we are on the gRPC.io website, and as you can see, this is where you would look at the docs should you have any problems as to this course or the documentation. But if you scroll all the way down, basically you can see the list of languages that we can quick start on. So based on your language, your favorite language, not essentially the language of this course, you can maybe have a specific quick start. Nonetheless, all the learnings in this course is applicable to all the languages, which is awesome, okay? So one of the things they advertise across gRPC is that it works across languages and platforms. And again, that's because we use a protocol buffer files in the beginning, and then we'll generate code for any language using the gRPC um, protocol tool generator. So let's get back to the slides. So although gRPC has so many languages, uh, we'll have a few main implementations. So there's gRPC Java, which is a pure implementation of gRPC in Java. That means it was built from the ground up using Java libraries. There's gRPC Go, which is also a pure implementation of gRPC in the Go language, again, built from the ground up. And then there's gRPC C, which is super low level, which is a pure implementation of gRPC in the C language. And you're wondering, is it going like this forever? No. gRPC C++, gRPC Python, Ruby, Objective-C, PHP, c -sharp, and many, many others maybe, they are actually relying on the gRPC C implementation. It's called using the C bindings. So basically all these libraries, C++, Python, Ruby, etc., they rely directly on the gRPC C library. 
and that's very important. That just gives you an idea that the development, how the development works for the framework. That means that, for example, if tomorrow the gRPC C library gets updated, it doesn't mean that the Java and the Go library will be updated at the very same time, but you can expect the C++, Python, Ruby, Objective-C, and so on to take very, very quickly advantage of the improvements in the gRPC C library because they directly depend on it. Uh, some other languages uh, may implement gRPC natively or rely on the C implementation, okay? I know there is a pure Python gRPC library, for example, so you never know, but that's for the official um, libraries. Now, why am I talking like this and saying it all over again that it can be used in any language? As I said, the code will be automatically generated, and so your microservices in any language can interact with each other. So let's say we have a website, and this website has a purchase service, okay, to purchase. And the person or the team in your company that wanted to implement that service uh, is a Go team. So they've implemented this is in Go. And we also have a pricing team. And the pricing team, they're, they're data scientists. So what they've done is that they've implemented the solution using the Python. Um, and now we have a mobile app the application. Maybe it's an Android app, right? And they've developed their app using Java. So you're like, oh my God, all these things need to talk to one another. But that's actually pretty easy. Because the purchase service and the pricing service were written using gRPC, you can generate what's called a stub, or stub is a client uh, on the mobile app Java. And automatically that stub will have implemented for you all the calls to the purchase service and the pricing service using protocol buffers and gRPC for request and response. So we'll see what that looks in the code later on. But just for you to get an idea right now, you don't need to care whether or not it's a Java application talking to a Go application or a Python application because they're all implementing gRPC, all the code generated for you, and you don't need to worry about details of the implementation besides the framework. Again, the purchase service can also itself has a, has a stub for the shipment service that would be written in C Sharp. Okay, so you really, really remember that diagram. It's going to be on the gRPC website as well. It's super important for you to understand this. That's that's really the key of gRPC works. The beauty of it is that any language can talk to any other language using that common framework, and that makes things super easy. So in summary, why protocol buffers? Well, because it's very easy to use and write message definition. The definition of the API will also be independent from the implementation. So that means that you can start writing your clients and your server as soon as you have written protocol buffers, uh, ideal message definition. And a lot of code, a lot of boilerplate code that you really don't want to write will be written for you and will be generated in any language just from a simple 10 lines protocol buffer files. And that's amazing for you. It saves you a lot of time and allow you to really focus on writing your application. Also, protocol buffers is binary and therefore very, very efficient to send and receive on a network. It's smaller, as we saw, and also deserializing and serializing on a CPU will be done in less cycles. Therefore, less powerful CPU will have a better advantage. All in all, uh, protocol buffers will also allow you to define an API. And if you follow my last course on protocol buffers, you'll see that you can evolve that messages in that API without breaking existing clients, which is extremely helpful for microservices, okay? No more versioning of your API. You can make it evolve as long as you follow a few rules that you know, okay? So all in all, that was a summary. We will use protocol buffers for gRPC in this course, and I will see you in the next lecture.